Hi everybody, Josiah here, also known as Chilling Silence, and I'm coming to you today from the car on the way to the office. Uh, unfortunately, my day job still got to pay the rent, but uh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about what's been happening specifically with Blizzard and around the Hong Kong protests, and uh, I believe it was Blitzchung who has gone and been basically ruled out of any tournaments. Now, why does this matter? Well, originally some people were saying that his account had been frozen. Now, apparently that's not the case. But his tournament winnings have been, uh, what was the word they used? I think it was like rescinded or something along those lines, which basically just meant we've taken it back. Now, that's really interesting if you have your funds with somebody else or they're in a bank account or let's say, for example, you are staking on an exchange which is a terrible idea. Don't do it. Um, basically, because the funds are not in your keys, they're not in your control, that sort of thing can happen. And we are seeing that happen in the real world in a variety of different situations. It's really unfortunate and it sucks that it's happened to this guy and it got me thinking about how Digibyte and Digi Assets specifically can solve that kind of thing. So with Digi Assets, one of the things is what would happen if you, if, if all of the game, like your cards, your collectibles, your in-game items, and all of that sort of thing, were digi assets that you could withdraw from the game and keep them yourself, or, or rather than keeping them in the game at all, you specifically sign in, and when you sign in with your digi ID, uh, it references that you have all of the different digi assets, and they're all in your control. Like that would be. I mean, that, that kind of makes sense. I was thinking about this, and so I play a lot of Dota 2, and I've wrecked up, uh, I think it's just shy of 6,800 hours, so that's a lot. Uh, I've also got a lot of in-game collectible items. Now, if something were to happen to that, my account is obviously protected, two-factor authentication, and all of that juicy stuff, but if something were to happen to that, I'd be pretty disappointed, obviously. I've put a lot of time and a lot of work into it. I'm still a terrible player, but that's not really the point. The point is more those digital assets that I've gone out and purchased, a number of them on a kind of a community marketplace even, they're, they're not in my control. Like at any point in time, the Valve could up and decide, hey, sorry, we're just going to shut down your account. We noticed that you logged in from a different IP address. We think that somebody's doing something malicious. A uh, computer gets infected with a virus and what, you know, whatever. And then I'm, then I'm sweet out of luck. Like there's, there goes all of my collectibles, all of my cosmetics. Now, that also, you know, it, it kind of... It got me thinking, what we need to do is we need, ideally, to be pushing for that kind of thing in the future. We're seeing this now with the likes of V-Bucks, even, and a whole bunch of other stuff like that for, for Fortnite, as they start to bring out more collectibles and things. It's going to become a bigger issue, and we have the opportunity to be at the forefront of addressing that, and we have a solution. So, speaking of a solution, one of the things with Digi Assets right now, uh, Yoshi has been working on some kind of like some underlying changes to the Digibyte Core wallet that will allow it to better serve the SPV wallets, which are Android and iOS specifically. Um, so, at the moment, on Android, what happens is it goes and it references an external metadata server, uh, which basically sends your wallet the details, the specifics on what's going on. Uh, what assets you have and things like that. Now, that's okay, it's great for starting out, but in an ideal scenario, it would be truly distributed, truly decentralized, and utilize the individual asset wallets just like you do for Digibyte. So that's coming, and the initial feedback from Yoshi, he's been doing some testing, has been really positive. So once he's got this, uh, aspect of things sorted and we're going to look to incorporate it into the Digibyte wallet. After that, we will then get the changes made to Android to work with it specifically. Uh, and also iOS Digi Asset support is, like I've mentioned, in the pipeline. So he's, he's kind of, it's a bit of like a two-pronged approach. You've got to have the underlying base, but he's working on the top to test it out inside the app and things as well. So yeah, it's, it's coming, it's on its way, and uh, I'm really, really excited for it. 
anyway, just this was something just to kind of get you thinking a little bit and kind of get your mind wandering around the sort of like ownership. What happens if you don't have control of your digi assets? What happens if you've put your digi byte into an exchange? What can happen? So, I mean, I'm not here for all the doom and gloom and things, but it pays to be prepared. We have been equipped with the ability to look after it ourselves, and it makes sense to. So anyway, that's all from me for today. I hope you've enjoyed this. Consider leaving a like, subscribe. You can reach me in the comment section below. Uh, otherwise, I'm on Twitter, at DGB underscore chilling, or I'll talk in the next video, and I'll see you tomorrow. Cheers.